Get ready! You're tuned in to Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T, bringing you the hottest trending topics on social media. Stay connected. Instagram.com slash Lovely Tea 2002. Hey, you guys. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T. Hey, tea sippers. Thank you for joining me for another episode. I hope everybody's doing good today. So I have my girl, Emily, here to join me in this conversation. Say what's up to the people, Emily. Hey. (laughs) So we wanted to come on here and talk about all the drama that's going on in the sex work industry. And I think, like I was telling you before, I said, I think I want to call this show the deplatformization of sex workers because they got these sex workers going from platform to platform on a on a hobo tour, on a hobo sex tour, because these platforms keep playing them and the sex workers are very, very upset. So it was announced earlier, um, no, it was announced in June that basically OnlyFans was looking to rebrand. And so they haven't really come out and confirmed it, but this is being whispered by many large publications like the New York Times, Rolling Stones, And they're basically saying that they're looking for more funding. They want a $1 billion evaluation. And the only way to get that is that they need to get rid of the sex workers because right now their site has just turned into a bunch of smut and they're looking to clean up their image. So what do you think when you first heard about that, Emily? Well, I definitely agree with the point that you had made earlier where they uh, had been used because like you said, sex sells. So they're getting all these girls to come in or just all these sex workers to come in and build their platform. And then the minute that um, they want to go more mainstream, they can't because it's too much sex work on there. Right. I think what a lot of people don't know before OnlyFans, Patreon was also cool with sex workers at once upon a time. I have found this really interesting article about a young girl. Um, She was speaking out in, I believe, March of this year. And basically she started doing adult cam work. And so first she started uploading her videos onto Tumblr. Because remember, Tumblr used to allow all types of freaky stuff. Mm -hmm. And then she wanted to find a way to monetize that. Because why keep posting yourself naked for free? So she joined Patreon in 2014 to like better monetize her art and her, you know, her nudes and stuff like that. And she had over 3000 subscribers on Patreon and she was pulling around 25 grand a month. Okay. Then in 2017, Patreon put out an announcement and they said, Patreon is moving to restrict adult content on its crowdfunding site. So from 2014 to 2017, they was cool with it. So from 2014 to 2017, They were cool with sex workers using their site for crowdfunding. And don't forget, Patreon gets a percentage of every, you know, dollar earned, right? And then all of a sudden, they just started removing sex workers and saying that they wanted to go, quote unquote, more mainstream and that the sex workers were making Patreon look bad. So she went from making 25 grand a month to nothing. She lost it all. So then come, I believe, 2018 is when she migrated to OnlyFans because OnlyFans was like, oh, Patreon shut shut you guys down. We're we're willing to accept everybody, young, old, porn star, regular. You know, that's what they do. They make it look like they're all inclusive. Mm -hmm. So she moved over there in 2018 and she started making bank. A lot of her followers followed her over there. She was having a good time. Um, OnlyFans was taking 20% of their cut. But, you know, she's making her money. And then now fast forward to 2021, they're doing the same thing that Patreon did in 2017, which is uh, we want to go public. We want to be more mainstream. We don't want this sex worker, you know, mentality and these sex workers on here. It's becoming too much that OnlyFans is only known for sex work as opposed to other things like cooking and sewing and, you know, doing tutorials. So I just find it very, very interesting how a lot of these companies are basically pulling a YouTube, what YouTube did to us as creators, where, you know, in the old days of YouTube, anything went. And I'm not saying necessarily porn, but, you know, people could make all types of crazy skits and, you know, prank videos. And Mm -hmm. YouTube was a wild, wild west. But once they started going commercial and bringing on celebrities and, you know, interacting with Hollywood, then they had to clean themselves up. 
And they got rid of a lot of those prank channels and problematic channels and things like that in order to save their brand and make their brand look more exquisite. So I see the same thing happening with OnlyFans as well. Yeah, and it's kind of interesting because OnlyFans is kind of infamous for, for sex work. Like, that's what everybody did when every, when everything shut down. <clears throat> excuse me. Everybody ran to OnlyFans. So I don't even know how they would clean their image up right now. I mean, there's so many videos, the, the um, Beyonce shout out. Um, there's other videos, uh, music videos with artists starting OnlyFans and dancing and making all this money. And it was promoting sex work. So it's kind of messed up that they're doing that. And I'm really interested into seeing how in the future they would even have a more like mainstream look to it. Right. I think they're going to make it more mainstream by using celebrities. See, that's yeah. how you push it towards the mainstream. When you say, well, we have the Bella Thorns and we have, you know, um, just whatever celebrity, Jack Black and people like that who can make it more user friendly, because that's what YouTube did. You know, they really pushed the Jack Blacks and Will Smiths and things like that. And even Floyd Mayweather during the fight, he was wearing nothing but OnlyFans gear you know, promoting oh, them, you know, so that's what they're doing now. They're trying to move more towards the celebrity realm. And I think it's really unfortunate. Now, another thing that I found very interesting is people's responses to this on Twitter. So last month, it caused like a whole conversation. And it seemed like many people thought it was funny and was clowning. So I'm just going to read some of the tweets. Okay. So one person says, only fans removing adult content. Some people's incomes are about to be in shambles. Another person, what will you OnlyFans quote unquote entrepreneurs do when they start removing nudes and pornography from their platform? Somebody else says, not OnlyFans taught my removing pornography to get more advertisers. Y'all about to be un unemployed. Laugh my fucking ass off. Mm. It sounds like a bunch of haters. Yeah. And you know, that's the part that annoys me with social media. And I don't care if it's YouTube, if it's, you know, OnlyFans. If you're able to get a bag on your own, for whatever reason, people like you, people gravitate towards you, they like, they like your content, and you're able to get a bag that way, you have people who are just pissed and in their feelings. But the thing is, these are platforms that if you have some type of talent or personality, you too could get a bag. But they spend all that time hating on people and throwing shade. And the thing is, how are you mad because these girls are on OnlyFans showing off their bodies? But some of these same men talking shit and saying these thoughts are about to be on suicide watch. I hope these hoes, you know, saved up. It's an end to the simp economy. A lot of the folks who are talking mess are also the same ones who watch porn on the low. They're also the same ones who low key watch these same girls that they're making fun of. Yeah. And the hypocrisy is real, too, because, um, you know, there's all this stuff going on with, you know, the slut walk and, uh, you know, all this this era that we live in where you, you can't judge people if you say anything like, OK, you know, there is a dark side to this or any type of if you give a negative opinion. Well, then also on the same side, people are like, well, you shouldn't judge them and you shouldn't do this, and you, which you shouldn't. Don't get me wrong. But the Internet really does have is so bipolar. Like I first they're laughing at them now that they actually are making money. But before, when they are probably just starting out, well, OK, don't judge them. They got to do what they got to do. Yeah, it's such a contradictory stance, you know, and I'm all for anybody. As long as you're over the age of 18 and, and you know, if people want to pay you to shake your ass online. That is your business. I'm not going to tell right. you how to eat. But there's also consequences that come with that. And we've spoken on that, you know, in depth that it's not as easy as some people make it out to be. And granted, some folks are making 20 grand a month, 30 grand a month. But the average person, if you don't have a big enough following or a loyal following, you might only make just a few hundred dollars a month. And then at that point, you have to ask yourself, is it worth it for me to continue this and, and give so much of myself for two or three hundred dollars compared to somebody who's bringing in 20 grand? Exactly. There's definitely a dark side to the OnlyFans. And I think we had spoke about that before as well, saying, OK, well, in this instance with this website, it's kind of given a lot of these sex workers, uh, I guess, more freedom to where they're not getting pimped out 
<clears throat> they can kind of be their own boss. It's not as dangerous as, you know, working in the clubs or, you know, walking the streets or anything. And, you know, I was talking to one of my really good friends and I was, you know, quite, she's an OGT sipper <laughs> too. But uh, anyways, um, she was kind of giving me the lowdown at where I didn't even realize that there's, you know, girls that are packing motel rooms full camming all day with pimps. And I didn't even, you know, I figured there was probably somewhat of a grimy side, but, you know, now with the travel industry kind of being hit as hard as it was, a lot of the uh, cities, like the one that I live in and other cities that are bigger, but just their travel industry, there's not as much tourism there. Mm -hmm. uh, the strip clubs are really getting hit hard to where they're not able to make money. So now they're having to come up with other ways. They're having to be a little bit more creative and only fans has been an outlet that they've been able to use, but they're still being, um, what's the word exploited. Right. Yeah. If you have girls crammed into a motel room camming all day, are they really even the ones getting the money? And you know, that's a perfect segue into, as I was digging deeper into this as to why these Yo, what's up? Hey, T-Sippers. To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.